Um, so yeah, how's it going? Uh, first of all, welcome to Screen Crusades, our movie show with Not Fest. Uh, very happy to have both of you hanging out with us to talk about this great uh, fever dream, hallucinogenin, uh, Greek myth, art house, horror serial killer movie. <laughs> <laughs> did, I, did I hit all the bases? Oh, yeah. there? <laughs> I think you have to use the word uh, phantasmagoric in there sometimes. Somewhere, even even though I don't know what it means, except man, <laughs> uh, Panos is going to come out with a movie called Phantasmagoria. Um, yeah, I think you got it. Yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty great, honestly. As a fan of uh, you know everything from Grindhouse to Hammer Horror to uh, I mean, there, it just it hits a lot of notes that we don't really see uh mind as effectively these days um if each of you could uh tell me just a little bit about we can start with you sarah uh learning about this project and uh, did you have any sort of sense even reading the script of what kind of film this would turn into because it's just it's so visually striking and immersive and uh you know it feels like a dream yeah um, that part of the conversation early on it was um and it was also very plainly in the script. So it, it was, uh, it, it read the way, you know, it, it, it views. Um, <clears throat> while Travis was writing, we were talking a lot and then um, about different themes and different sort of uh, approaches to some of the themes. Um, and then when he gave me the script, I just loved it immediately. It was unlike most things I've read or, I mean anything I've read but it, it's not it's not all the time that you read something and you're like I get her I love her I love this I want to be part of it so it's pretty pretty nice to to get to be part of it and then... yeah yeah it's a nice surprise and and for you Josh uh you know and obviously as a uh, filmmaker and um you know the different experiences and skill sets that you bring to the table what, what was your uh impression of, of this whole thing when you first came across it i mean patrick bateman at the evil dead cabin i was like holy <laughs> shit who doesn't want to who, who doesn't want to be part of that um yeah it, yeah that it would be fun as hell to do and i mean i hadn't i after after my first film i didn't think i'd ever star in a movie again you know, i did an obscure rom-com i don't think anyone's seen uh but uh to have gotten you know, Travis DM'd me and said, are you still interested in performing? I said, absolutely. And then he cracked the script open. You realize how kind of Jalo-esque and Raimi-esque it's going to be, mm. let alone when you get there and you realize, holy shit, um, uh, this is a, a an incredibly visionary kind of different experience than I've, I've probably ever had as, as an actor. Um, I think we all knew we were in for something special, but nothing quite hit like when <clears throat> I saw it for the first time at Tribeca, just with the score and the film stock, and yeah, the score. You know, um, Let's not forget the score. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Vol just killed it. Yeah, I'm always curious from a, a performance perspective in a film like this, where the audience is privy to important information earlier than our protagonist. Um, how you go about uh, playing that, right? Because you know, Sarah, you have you're you're learning things that the audience knows a good bit of time beforehand about this guy your character meets um how do you as as performers sort of um i, I guess approach that or uh you know figure out how to how to play that um i mean in in a way when you read the script you're reading it as an audience member in in, in a way not entirely but so, so it's sort of always kind of part of the job. Um, yeah. uh, and, and of course, some of the information on like how to play the character and, and sort of what's required um, comes from, okay, so the audience finds out that he's bad right away. So they don't need me to indicate that or hide it, you know? Um, so I, I suppose in the case of playing Meredith, she's free to be registering these things, uh, the meaning the, the red flags as they come up and then deciding for whatever reason to to continue with the with the weekend until she decides that uh, it's gone too far for her, if that, if that makes sense. Yeah, totally. And uh, for you, Josh, also, yeah, playing someone like that that is, uh, you know, has this uh, dark side that's um, 
being hidden and obscured um you know what's it like sort of playing that that duality of uh you know evil disguised as uh well-meaning uh it was a fun challenge because you're playing a narcissistic personality uh who is who is a walking veneer who who peacocks as part of his like his 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 predatorial seduction process so you're you're playing a character who's in a mask um so uh it it was it was a really exciting challenge because you observe in real life or i certainly do as myself as someone who wears the veneer of being mr smiley and then you know and you're kind of in it and then being entertaining or uh showing your (laughs) grace and graciousness graciousness and interest and listening and smiling and then i've always kind of felt my 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 mask melt away often exhausted especially as a, as a comedian or coming you know someone who comes from a long line of people pleasers we we all are familiar with um uh being something that we're not or or arriving with a feeling that we don't necessarily have and pushing through it and that's that's what this guy has to do in order to like feed which is kind of a creepy crazy thought yeah so that was the that was the north star just in terms of like motivation and you know you even using the term narcissism i mean something that i've found in the last even just year or two come up in conversation with some close friends you know there's this sense that narcissism is is basically synonymous with vanity and it's like no 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 this is a whole in its most extreme sense it's way more than somebody who's just like i think i'm attractive or i think i'm charming you know much like you'll hear someone say like um i'm so ocd man i have to alphabetize all my records and it's like yeah that's not actually what it you know you wash your hands a lot that's not really what ocd is and yeah i think this film has a lot to say about um certainly uh in terms of the gender dynamics at play the uh the way that narcissistic men prey upon women you know and and i feel like that that's uh, underneath all of those things i said at the top of the conversation that are going on here i feel like that's like the the skeleton beneath the you know all the meat and skin of the of this film um if you could i guess each uh talk a little bit about that thematically and i guess the way that uh you know horror films are often these heightened exaggerated morality plays that are dealing with very real on the ground things that don't have to involve serial killing (laughs) um you know i guess if you just talk a little bit about that sort of the theme of uh you know the predatory narcissist and where it goes yeah josh you go first uh, I, i'm sure it means something quite different for me than maybe sarah than maybe travis and maybe maybe other people i mean it's uh i as far as the theme of it goes i don't know if this answers your question i can just say that i, I i'm i think it's really important to exhibit without really hammering the point on the nose that it's dangerous and that it's shitty to date and you know for 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 men and women but especially for women who often find themselves not just in the squirmy awkward discomfort of having to appease and truly like wear the mask of appeasement to to see and find and weave in break the veneer of someone who might exhibit it's not narcissistic personality but just you know the veneers and the masks that we all wear when we date um so i think it's an important film in that regard but I i i'd like to think that people will walk away um kind of finding it as a bit of a catharsis and and yeah. uh and and more of a roller coaster than just more of like oh that's a that's a film about um you know how how we we better watch out and or that's a mm. that's a film you know it's a cautionary tale about about dating i hope it, it it just becomes more of a kind of a beautiful film for folks who've experienced that on upstairs if you feel the same sort yeah, of catharsis is great that's a great th- yeah like you know the end of inglorious bastards <laughs> like yeah we know yeah him. <laughs> it feels very cathartic just <laughs> to see how the movie ends yeah yeah i think one of the the interesting tensions of the movie is that it like a serial killer is a is a very rare thing it doesn't happen that often um so it takes a like narcissistic or abusive person and escalates it to this like pretty rarefied place of like serial killer like 
kind of pure evil in a way. And yet the way, and I, and I think this is largely thanks to uh, the way Josh plays Bruce, so grounded, so like firmly anchored in uh, a not heightened place of like very human. Ju he's just a person. Um, let's us sort of see the grandiosity that with which he sees himself as his delusion and not sort of take it on as like, oh, he's the embodiment of, of evil. Like mm. he, he's perfectly banal as like all of us are, including those of us who do <laughs> cause harm, <laughs> create destruction in the world and in other people's lives. Ultimately, it's just someone kind of having a tantrum. Yeah. Who just believes that they are entitled to whatever they want and when they don't get it, they have a tantrum. And yeah. I I think it's really, really interesting to be able to explore and sort of hold both ends of that tension mm -hmm. in this movie. And I find it not exactly cathartic, but like really satisfying because it's it's true. And so, you know, it, that 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 heightening that sense of danger and whatever Bruce is while also being like able to laugh at him because he's just a person is useful you know yeah. because, because I think in, in life when you go through dealing with a person like that at the end of it once you're out of it you're like that's all you did that that's all it is right yeah oh, oh okay and then hopefully you can see through it next time and I think in a lot of ways you, you can once you yeah. see through it, you're just like, oh, there it is. There it is again. Okay, forget it. And then yeah. you know, you know, it's hard to see the red flags when you don't know what they are. But then once you know, yeah, it, it, I, watching this this film, I, I was reminded of, uh, of course, I, I probably should have looked up who to attribute it to. But there's that famous quote that's gone around the last couple of years of, uh, you know, in, in dating, men are afraid of being rejected. Women are afraid of being murdered. It's like I felt like this movie really like uh, touched upon that. I think I think I don't remember who the quote is uh, either, but I think it's actually men are afraid of being laughed at. Laughed at, yeah, that's right. Which is even more so with this movie, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah which great. makes makes that makes uh, Meredith's "Go fuck yourself" so satisfying. That you know, for that last beat living vicariously in a way just like of, of all the times we want to say go fuck yourself to any of those situations and certain certainly women i know in my life have been through or experienced that extreme level of narcissism or abuse it's just that yeah. that kind of thing of no more and we're in the era of that of no more you know even yes. though there will always be trials and tribulations to do with men and men in power my god um uh, i feel like me too was probably a blip unfortunately though a valuable one it's, that's why it's so satisfying and so killer to be a part of, you know, to yeah. see that. But it's it's ultimately though that what's what's interesting is this, you know, without giving any spoilers away, this is about about the type of personality that would rather, you know, flay themselves in essence than admit their wrongdoing or or expose themselves, um, their vulnerability. And that's like, gosh, boy, does that ever get to the the heart of what a toxic man or narcissistic personality yeah. is? Yeah, like, never will expose. And yeah, uh, and very very timely with with many of uh, toxic types uh, very prominent in our society right now. Yeah, uh, yeah awesome. So uh, last thing quickly before we have to wrap up uh, on a much lighter note, I felt like watching this film, I was getting a little bit of an art education. Did you have uh, a similar experience in terms of just immersing yourself in, you know, that world of of fine art? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I I hadn't heard of any of the uh, female surrealists right reference in this, and uh, some of the one in particular, like really really just like bullseyed me <laughs> when I saw uh, some of uh, Katie Horna's um, photography, her her mask uh, series with uh, photographs, like uh, it, it's like someone crawled inside, I don't know, 
whatever room where I save like the the ultimate images that I would love to see and it was just like all of it in one place and she did it in the 40s and proud yeah yeah the, oh, the yeah. movie's very sneaky in that it, it's uh it's giving us uh broccoli and our mashed potatoes <laughs> yeah. things that you know you wow. should have, you know but then it's like in there so well put damn yes <laughs> Awesome. Well, thanks so much, both of you. Uh, I hope people uh, go out and find this movie. It's very cool. It's very unique right now. And um, and like you guys said, it's it's very cathartic and satisfying. So, um, yeah, have a good rest of your day. And thanks again for hanging out.